Right, all right, all right. Bungie's big weekly news article has just dropped, and in it, we're going to be talking about the dungeon that comes out next season and a new exotic, or I guess a reprised exotic from D1 being reimagined. Very exciting stuff. We got Dragon's Breath here. This is the Twid, of course, previously known as the Twab, and we got the preview of everything that we're going through. We've got the Season of the Wish teaser. We watched this and we did a complete breakdown video of this. Definitely looking spicy, looking forward to that. Dragon's Breath reimagined. This is a D1 classic. From the Flames emerges a classic, the Dragon's Breath exotic rocket launcher returns in Season of the Wishes seasonal exotic reward track or seasonal reward track. This exotic has been reimagined to sow mayhem around it. Very, very interesting. I'm sure it'll be really good because Bungie has been doing a lot of reworks of these exotics, bringing them to Destiny 2 and adding a lot of flavor to them, making them much more powerful, like Thorn, for example, has been, I, th I would say, better in D2 than it was in D1. So hopefully this thing will just be like devastating. It'll be really fun to use. I'm excited for it. Let's take a look at what this exotic, what makes this exotic a hot item. Burn the world, exotic intrinsic. The fuel counter passively increases the longer you go without firing it to a maximum of times five. Interesting. So you build up the fuel counter. Firing Dragon's Breath then empties this counter, transferring all fuel to the rocket. Oh gosh. Rockets then embed themselves in struck targets, causing scorch damage and periodically ejecting incendiary fuel into pools around the target that inflicts scorch damage to anyone standing in them. Whoa. Okay, so that sounds like it's going to be very, very crazy. <laughs> You're going to be having a bunch of crazy ignitions from this. The more fuel a rocket is fired with, the longer it lasts before detonating and the more fire it spreads. Wow. Okay. High octane exotic intrinsic. With this intrinsic, nearby ignitions instantly refill your dragon's breath with two fuel. Plus when fuel fully refills, it reloads itself. Okay. This is going to be pretty wild. Once you've got this thing in hand, make sure to pay a visit to the gunsmith in the tower so you can get the quest for the exotic catalyst. Speaking of which, Pyromancer, Exotic Catalyst. This catalyst passively replenishes your Dragon's Breath fuel faster, and eliminating combatants with this weapon causes them to spawn fire sprites too. Wow. So that seems like it's going to be a lot of fun to use. Definitely looking forward to that. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about that coming back next season. Then we have Season of the Wish, Economy and Rewards, Tuning Preview. Okay. It feels like a good moment to start talking about some of the economy and rewards changes coming with Season of the Wish. The Destiny 2 economy team has some news to share regarding Lost Sectors and End of Match rewards in particular. Before we jump into the new stuff, here are some of the previously announced updates that will be arriving with Season of the Wish in a few weeks. A recap of previously announced changes. One of the first economy changes we shared about Season of the Wish involved Legendary Shards. They're getting rid of these eventually, right? To be more precise, we are removing them. When the new season drops, several vendors won't be asking for shards in exchange for their services. So you don't have to use them starting next season and then they go away with the final shape. If you're hearing about this for the first time, don't worry, this is a slow phase out and they won't be totally gone until final shape drops. Vendors make up a lot of the economy team's responsibilities, so Banshee44 was next in the spotlight. Taking a note from other vendors, starting with Season of the Wish, our dearest gunsmith will be able to focus a selection of foundry weapons using a new gunsmith engrams. Banshee44 ended up having to share the spotlight with another beloved vendor too, Rahul the Cryptarch. will have a selection of items offered at reduced prices each week, and now he'll help you break down some additional materials. We've all talked about this before. This is all really good stuff. The economy stuff that's coming is really, really looking exciting. Last but not least, we have an update for your dearest friend and ally. Your ghost will see a broad reduction in mod energy costs. Yep, we've covered this before. New rewards for lost sectors. Very interesting. Starting with Season of the Wish, we are introducing additional rewards for completing Lost Sectors without the assistance or comfort of a stalwart fire team. So if you go in solo, you're going to get better loot. While the Gunsmith Engrams will introduce are introduced as a reward to all difficulties of Lost Sectors, Select Foundry Weapons will also drop from Legend and Master Completions. Weapons will drop at these rates, assuming the Guardian is through enough to leave no champion standing. Legend 70%, Master 100%, nice. Throw completions of Master Difficulty will also have the advantage of weapon dropping with an additional perk in either the third or fourth column. Very cool, which could be helpful in chasing that perfect roll. That's awesome. I actually like that. That's a great change. Weapons available from Lost Sectors are grouped into several smaller pools to make chasing a particular weapon more feasible, and they'll rotate after each daily reset. The following weapons will be available from Lost Sectors during Season of the Wish. Okay, so we got the Nox Perennial. I believe that's the Strand Fusion Rifle, the Old Sterling, that's the Auto Rifle. The Marcelon C, the Sununa, the Hermetic, Pulse Rifle, the Glissando Scout, the Irikanji, Sniper, Nosredden, Sword, Heliocentric, Last Fray, Hand in Hand, Battle Scar. Got it. Geodetic, Combined Action, Harsh Language, Coronach. Very cool. After the fourth day, the cycle repeats. 
very cool. This should be really fun to grind some Lost Sectors for some better loot. Although I will say that grinding Lost Sectors has gotten kind of old. I've already feel like I've grind too many Lost Sectors. So maybe, fingers crossed, we're getting an introduction of some new Lost Sectors. As you may have noticed, these weapons are also available from the World Loot Pool Drops. The newest World Loot Pool weapons will eventually find their way into Lost Sector chests in the season after their debut. Once enough time has passed, the older weapons will move on to being only available from Gunsmith Focusing Pool. Got it. The exotic rewards you expect will still drop from Legend and Mass Lost Sectors if you complete them solo with the inclusion of Gunsmith Engrams and more weapon rewards. We expect each run to feel more rewarding, whatever your goal might be. All right. Then we have more Ritual Engrams are coming. Very interesting. The next update we have to share about is the post-activity ritual rewards you get from playing Vanguard Ops Crucible in Gambit. We know players want to get a hold of the newest weapons as soon as possible each season to try strategies and builds. That's one of the reasons we made the newest ritual weapons available for Engram focusing at their correspondent vendors from the word go. Next season, we are taking a step further so players have more agency on the rewards they can get after a long play session in the ritual playlist. Okay. At the start of the season of Wish, Ritual Activity Completion Rewards now include additional drops of Ritual Engrams. This influx of Engrams will let players focus more often for gear from seasons past and present. That said, the Legendary Shards going away soon, the Ritual Vendors will see the cost of focusing Engrams slightly change. To be clear, the increase in Engram drops go hand in hand with these price changes, and we're hoping you'll still find yourself focusing just as often, albeit with a different set of currencies. We have previously shared the new cost of Ritual Vendor focusing, here we go. So here's a quick reminder of the new requirements. New ritual weapons, Engram 1, Glimmer. Got it. Legacy weapons. Got it. 10 Nightfall Cyphers for the Adept. Got it. Okay. With this new system in place, players will be earning more Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit Engrams than ever before. So don't forget that Engrams being held by the tower vendors like Shax at the end of each season. Yep, grab those. Very cool. Recognizing veteran service, we got the Jumpmaster Emote. This is an emote they're doing for to celebrate Veterans Day. Obviously, it's like a U.S. holiday, but uh, thank you to those obviously that, that serve in the military. The Jumpmaster emote is available in Eververse until the end of season 22, and all profits from the purchase of the emote will be split into with Team Rubicon and the Bungie Foundation to continue to bring hope to disaster-stricken communities across the globe. Very cool stuff. We got Iron Banner Last Call. So this is your last chance to get in there and grind out some Iron Banner. If that's your thing i don't really see any weapons that are too appetizing to me so we have the weapon dark decider is leaving and ganora's axe if you want either of those make sure or certain rolls of them make sure to grind a little bit of iron banner then and then we have new we're gonna have the lethal abundant strand high impact auto rifle it's gonna be that 360 rpm we don't know what perks it has on it yet could be pretty good though and then returning we have the riz walker kinetic light shotgun and that has been pretty good in the past so we'll see what new perks it's gonna have on it now we have new year six dungeon date. Here you go, 9 a.m. Pacific time on Friday, December 1st, a new dungeon is dropping in Destiny 2. Definitely looking forward to that and grinding that. And of course, we'll be bringing you a guide on how to beat it as soon as we conquer it right after it comes out. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications on. And then we have Playful Prime Gaming drops right here. We've got the Playground Ride Emote. If you want all of these, all you have to do is link your Bungie.net account with your Amazon account and then you'll have the Twitch Prime along with that. It all links together, basically. And then these will drop for you in-game. You can have this emote, the ship, the sparrow, and the shader all together. And this shader is actually really, really funny. I think it makes you look like you're wearing pajamas. If you haven't seen the videos and stuff of that, it's actually a really, really cool shader. So I recommend doing that. And then when you have that Prime sub, you can subscribe to your favorite streamer, which is obviously Lucky 10 p right? I'm just kidding. Then we have player support report. The end of the season approaches <clears throat> on November 28th at 9 p.m. That's when everything's going to be gone. So make sure you claim all your triumphs and all of your loot from the vendors and everything else. So that way you don't lose that stuff that you worked really hard for grinding throughout this season. If you did grind this season. Then we have the movie of the week. And we have the artists of the week. They're always The artists in the community are always doing some crazy stuff. Look at that. That looks really cool. Nezrak, all void, evil looking. Very cool. That's going to be a wrap. That's from the Destiny community team. Previously, we had all of the twids and twabs. They would be specifically from a certain individual. They would have, you know, different, you know, community management individuals. Now they're just calling it the Destiny 2 team overall. Let me know your thoughts about that. Let me know your thoughts about everything that's going on here in the Destiny 2 world. You looking forward to season 23? Are you grinding it? You ready to go? Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Later.